So we'll start off with the bad news. The bad news is we are all sinners. Romans chapter 3, verse 23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you're honest, you've sinned. Everyone has sinned. The consequence for sin is hell, also known as the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 21, verse 8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with the fire and brimstone, which is a second death. This is the fate of sinners. This is the fate of everyone. You also can't save yourself. The Bible says all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags. Isaiah chapter 64, verse 6, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, and we all do fade as a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind have taken us away. All our righteousnesses is filthy rags. What is righteousness? Righteousness is doing that which is right. Loving your neighbor, loving God, repenting of your sins, obeying the Ten Commandments, etc. Those are all righteous things, but they play no role in salvation. Your absolute best is a filthy rag. Remember that. So that's the bad news. Everyone is a sinner on their way to hell, and our best attempt to save ourselves from hell is a filthy rag. Romans chapter 6 verse 23 reads, For the wages of sin is death. That's the bad news. But, now for the good news. The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The good news is salvation is a free gift. Romans chapter 5 verse 16, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. It's simple to receive a gift. Likewise, it's going to be simple to receive salvation. Salvation cannot be earned or worked for. That wouldn't be a gift. Salvation can only be simply received. Some more good news. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Jesus came to save sinners. This is a foreign concept to the world. The, the world doesn't care about criminals. The world only wants justice for criminals. There's nothing wrong with that, but if God were to have that mindset, then everyone would be thrown into the pits of hell. The world doesn't save criminals, but that's exactly what Jesus did. He came to save sinners, not good people. The way to receive the free gift of salvation is by simply believing in Jesus. Acts chapter 16, verse 30 through 31, And brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Another word for believe is to trust, to trust in Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1, starting verse 12, That we should be to the praise of his glory, who first trusted in Christ, and whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. You trust in Jesus. You trust in the Jesus who died for your sins, was buried, and rose again on the third day. That is the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, starting verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. By trusting in the Jesus who died for your sins, was buried, and rose again, you are saved forever. Once saved, always saved. Jesus says in John chapter 5, verse 24, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth on him that sent me, hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. What Jesus is saying in this verse is you believe or trust in him once you have everlasting life, meaning you're saved and you won't be condemned. You won't go to hell. Always saved. Once saved, always saved. So if you've just repented, changed your mind, and have trusted in Jesus as your only hope of salvation, then you are saved. You have repented. Luke chapter 15 verse 10. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. 
After salvation has been finished, the life of a Christian is very simple. It's not necessarily easy, but it's simple. It's straightforward. 1 John chapter 3, verse 23, And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. You believe in Jesus, you get saved, then you love one another. That's how all Christians should live. Galatians chapter 5, verse 14, For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself.